Welcome to Garage Gym Athlete Cooldowns. These episodes are short, actionable podcasts pulled from previous interviews and content we've been publishing for the last several years. So go for a walk, hop on the rower, or clip into the bike for this cooldown episode. It's it's a it's a lot of fun. So I run online business too, um, full time. But I'd like to hear from you. What's been your biggest? Let's go with struggle in running an online business. Oh, not being a complete bitch when people are mean <laughs> to me on the internet. Like that's something I'm very, I'm trying to work on. It's hard not trying to stick up for yourself. And, um, that's like one of the hardest things It's just human interaction and everybody has an opinion and you work so hard to come up with content and come out with great, a great product. And then someone puts you down for it and it's really hard. And you, I get those reviews on my cookbooks and apparel or whatever it is. And it's hard to hear that. So I'm trying to take feedback, whether it's negative or positive in um, a better way. But I think that's the hardest struggle is just hearing other people's opinions of things that you've worked really, really hard on and worked your ass off for and someone doesn't like it. I think that's the toughest part because you want everybody to like everything you do, but that's just not life. <laughs> yeah, especially to the the reach you have, you know, it's impossible to like, you probably can't even post like an Instagram post without somebody saying negative about something in the picture uh, somewhere, right? You know, it's uh, yeah. sometimes people are just that way. It's really unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it sucks. So what's your favorite thing about running an on online business? I mean, working for yourself. Working for my own self is the best. I get to make my own schedule every single day. I get to work from home. I get to come up with the content I'm interested in. And if I'm not interested in it, I can change direction and do whatever I want. But I get to call the shots and work with amazing company and amazing brands. And so just working for yourself is such freedom. It's amazing. And uh, tell me about writing your first cookbook. Yeah, that was a big learning experience for sure. I wrote my first one probably in like 2012, I believe. And um, went with this publisher who reached out to me and I did not like my experience. So I went with a different publisher for my second two cookbooks. Um, but yeah, it was a total different experience coming up with all the content for it in a certain time frame, and you have your contract and um, promoting it and learning how to promote without pushing stuff down people's throats. It's it's definitely a learning experience and it's hard work. Writing a book is tough and it's time consuming and it takes you away from all the other work that you need to do on top of that. So it was definitely all three books were big learning experiences. And ha has the process gotten a little bit easier each time? Absolutely. The first one was, um, I, it's funny because I think of the first one as like me in high school. And then the second one was college. And then the third one was grad school. So <laughs> each one, you have more of a vision of what you really want to come out with. And um, you can trust the process more because in the beginning, you're just so in the dark and you have no idea what's going to happen. And the second time around, I knew a little better. And the third one, I really knew what I wanted to come out with. Um, and I have no plans to write another cookbook at this point. So that third one was exactly what I wanted in a cookbook. It was nice to be able to um, get better and come up with even better recipes as I went on. And are you just taking a break or you just don't have one planned or what? Yeah, I just don't have one planned. I love working on my blog. That is my true passion because I can do whatever I want. And every week I share workouts, then I share food, then I share beauty or travel and fashion. And so it can really range. And cookbook, you know, it's say 150 recipes and you have to come up with 150 recipes in a certain time frame, and they all have to be photographed and written up and edited. And it's just not as fun. And I want this job to be fun. And so I'm just sticking with the blog and doing fun things every single day. That's awesome. Yeah, I've, I saw some of your blog posts about uh, some of the workouts you, you do. Uh, how do you how do you come up with them? Or do you get them from somewhere? So all the CrossFit workouts I do are at the CrossFit gym that I work out with. Okay. And then any accessory stuff, I just, I'll 
kind of look up different workout people on Instagram or things I've done in the past. And I've just been working. I'm just trying to build a bigger butt in 2018. So Mm -hmm. I've just been doing butt accessory workouts on the side. And I kind of just make those up and do try different things that I haven't done in a while and see how it feels. And so let's see, have you been doing CrossFit as long as Paleo MG or before? Yeah, CrossFit, I started in probably 2009. Okay. I think I started my blog in 2011. So a little bit longer than um, Paleo MG. That's awesome. And you, uh, you never turned back. No, I mean, I've done other things on top of CrossFit. So I've done Orange Theory. Um, I've done some Pilates, like reformer Pilates and different spinning classes and running and my accessory stuff on the side. But CrossFit is my go to love of my life. I mean, it completely changed my life for the better. And I love the gym that I work out with at I've been there for probably seven years. So, and I train, I was a trainer there as a coach there for six of those years. So I love it. I can't imagine doing anything else. And uh, yeah, I saw that you, uh, you coach as well. Do you still coach? No, I just stopped coaching probably two months ago. Okay. My certification ran up and I just wasn't interested in recertifying and it freed up more time for me to even do more stuff at home on my blog. So I just work out there now. That's funny. We we must have gotten our level ones pretty close to the same time. My uh, mine expires in I think like two months or something. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) yeah. It's hard because then you're like, okay, am I going to really use this certification and get the full, you know, however much it costs right benefit from it. So and I just wasn't going to do that. So it was time to move on. Yeah, that makes sense. Awesome. I'm going to transition to the book question. Um, so this is this is an unplanned uh, question. We ask it sometimes and sometimes we don't, but I think you'd be a really good fit because you have written some books. Um, so if there was a nationwide curriculum implemented and the president calls you up and he says that you're going to be responsible for one chapter inside of this book, and so every single child in America will have to read your chapter and be tested on it before they can pass and graduate uh, from high school, what would you want your chapter to be about? Well, I would, oh, shoot. I would, yeah, I would do paleo for sure. I would talk about the paleo diet, why it is so incredibly important and why um, the USDA is not teaching what we need to be taught. And um, just really explain to children the importance of high quality proteins and organic vegetables and staying away from processed food and sugar and soda, like getting these things out of our diet and why and how they affect the body long term. I think I wish I would have understood and known that information when I was a kid. And who knows if it would have made a difference because you're a kid and you're like, I don't care. I'm going to eat fucking little Debbie snack cakes. But I wish I would have had that information earlier. And so I could have implemented into my own life and just understood it better. That's, that's my main thing. I would want people to understand the paleo diet, not that they have to do that, but creating a a ground level understanding of why these foods are better for you than processed foods in general. Yeah, that's, that's tough too. You know, I think that would be, it's such great information, but it's hard, you know, with uh, just kids in general. I know we have a, I have a cousin in my family who has some inflammation problems that are, are, you know, very much and more, more than likely linked to diet. And we've recommended the paleo diet and, and going strict on that. And she's just absolutely not interested. Like, even though she has these health problems, she just does not care about totally. your diet. You know, I'm like, it baffles, you know, but you can't from it's your most of America, more, your more mature brain can't, uh, you know, put itself on a, on a young, young kid. But the the information is, is so valuable. Yeah. And I mean, adults still, have so many issues with that. You tell an adult why these things are better and they understand it, but they don't want to implement it into their own life. And, or you see parents who will eat a certain way, but they won't do that for their children. It's just doesn't make sense. But I, I wish more people understood how important diet is for not only your brain, but your physical body and long-term and fertility and everything. It's crazy. We, people need to know more about food. Yeah, and then even in the the fitness industry, because it, se- it sounds like you've been a part of both, and I think I feel like I was at one point too, where you're 
you're doing what you think that you should be doing, but it's in no way really healthy or, or good for you, you know, from, from things that you know now about the paleo diet. Uh, yeah. did, and did you experience a lot of that? I think mostly just, well, I think I still see that now where people are doing, if it fits your macros and they're just putting total shit into their body because it fits their extra macros in that day, stuff right. like that. I see those where, um, people are eating things that they know they shouldn't, but because it fits a certain concept that they can do it. And that kind of stuff, I'm just not a fan of. I rather you be not fitting inside your macros and eating whole foods instead of this like fat free chocolate with fat free ice cream and like fat free caramel sauce, like fucking weird shit like that. (laughs) I hate that in the fitness industry. And I still think we see that on a regular basis. Yeah, that's it's funny how these things can like start in one. I mean, it's even like CrossFit, like CrossFit at its core. Cause I mean, you've been to level one, you've coached for a long time at its core is an amazing thing. Um, you know, and they, they want you to have really good form and, uh, the exercise methodology is good. And then it's, it's people who take it to that, that next level or, or try and take concept of it and push it too far where, you know, people might be getting injured more frequently and the same in diet is like, okay, we're going to start using macros with clean eating to try and, you know, reshape your body. And then people are like, yeah, but you gave me this many macros. So why not, (laughs) you know, something, some terrible ice cream or whatever. It's just always unfortunate when uh, we as humans take, take it like that, you know? Yeah. And we do with most everything, you know, like as human beings, we love pushing things to the limits and seeing how far we can go with them. But that's not always the best idea. No. Thanks for listening to today's cool down. If for some ridiculous reason you are not subscribed to Garage Gym Athlete programming, fix that problem right now. Go to garagegymathlete.com, sign up for a free trial, get started with us today. Thanks for listening.